Hi, this is Bobby. Today we're going to continue talking about our identity in Christ, and this will be part two of our teaching called, I am always led in victory. Okay, so an important part of our identity is that we are to be constantly led in victory. And so last time we talked about the importance of we need to renew our mind and we need to change our speech. So we need to renew our thinking to stop thinking like the world thinks, and we need to start thinking according to the goodwill of God. And when we begin to think according to the goodwill of God, then we will begin to receive His goodwill. It will begin to be proven out in our lives. Secondly, people's tongues, they are constantly speaking in agreement with the devil, speaking failure, speaking sickness, speaking death. And the problem there is that our tongue sets on fire the course of our life, and our stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of our mouth. So if we're speaking death and failure, then we're going to receive death and failure. But when we renew our mind to God's good will, and we believe that in our heart, and when we speak it out of our mouth, then we're going to have life and victory. Okay, so this is a foundation is we have to renew our mind to the good will of God, and we're renewing it on the point of victory in this teaching. Okay, then we also talked about the fact that uh, victory and help from God, it's actually part of our salvation. And we looked at three salvation words in the Bible. We looked at Yeshua, we looked at Sozo, and we also looked at Soteria. And when you look at these definitions, these are salvation words, and everything that's included in the definitions of these words is also part of our salvation. And these things belong to us. And we see things like aid, help, victory, prosperity, welfare in life, being delivered, having deliverance, um, prospering, doing well, being delivered. Okay, so each of these words includes a full salvation, and this full salvation it belongs to every believer in Jesus. Amen? So salvation is not only about, I get to go to heaven when I die. And in fact, when you look at these, these words, you only see that that's a fractional part of what salvation includes. Amen? Then the last thing that we talked about last time is we looked at some scriptures that tell us that we are victorious children of God. Amen? So when we believe in Jesus, then we are born of God. We are born as overcomers. God lives in us. So the Spirit of God living in us is greater than the devil who is in the world. Therefore, we are equipped for victory, to, to have constant victory in life. By way of faith in Jesus, we are entitled to overcoming. We're entitled to a life of victory. And the scripture says that God always, not sometimes, but he always leads us in triumph in Christ. Amen? All right, so we're going to pick up from here. And what I want to start with is I can do all things through Christ. So let's look at what the Bible says about us. So number one, you are baptized into the body of Christ. You are part of Christ. You have put on the spirit of Christ. You have put on the authority of Christ. You have put on the miraculous power of Christ. You have put on the victory of Christ. You have put on the peace of Christ. You have put on the overcoming of all evil and overcoming of all trials, nature of Christ. You overcome all trials, all tribulation, and all evil, and you do so with good cheer in your soul. This is who you are. Okay, so this is a description of somebody who knows their identity in Christ, who is a believer in Jesus, and has laid hold of their identity. This is a description of them. And let that be you, and let that be me. Okay, now let's look at the scriptures that tell us this. In Galatians 3.27 and in John 16.33, it says, for as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Okay, let's add to that. John 16, 33. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Okay, so first of all, starting with Galatians. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ, you have put on Christ. Okay, so when we're born again, we become the body of Christ. Jesus is the head of Christ. We are the body of Christ. And so every believer is some portion or some part of the body of Christ. We are in Christ. Okay, we are in, we are in Christ. We are part of the body. Okay, and it says that we have put on Christ. 
Well, what does it mean to put on Christ? That means that we have put on the Spirit of Christ. We have put on the authority of Christ. We have put on the miraculous power of Christ. We have put on the good and godly nature of Christ. We have put on the love of Christ. We have put on the peace of Christ. We have put on the power of Christ. You know, so anything about Christ, when we are baptized into Christ and the Spirit of Christ is upon us, in other words, we are anointed with the Holy Spirit, then everything that belonged to Jesus and everything that that is with the Holy Spirit is also upon us and belongs to us. Okay, so you want to you want to think this through so that the scripture opens up. What are the things that Jesus said? If you have put on Christ, then you have put on um, all authority in heaven and on earth, which belongs to Christ. If you have put on Christ, then you have put on the Holy Spirit. And we know that the power of God is resident with the Holy Spirit. So all the miraculous power of God comes with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And we need to realize what we have. We need to realize that we are anointed with the Holy Spirit and with the power of God. And then by believing in that, then we will begin to start operating in power and releasing power. Amen. Okay, if we have put on Christ, we have put on the holiness of Christ. We have put on the love of Christ. We have put on, you know, the the helpful nature of Christ. Okay, so I want you to think about all things that Jesus Christ had in his ministry on the earth and then envision and imagine yourself with all those same qualities. That's what it means to have put on Christ. All right? Okay, then it says in John, these things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. Okay, where are we? We are in Christ. Okay, we are the body of Christ, so we are in Christ. We are baptized into Christ. We have put on the Spirit of Christ. The Spirit of Christ is upon us. We are in Him. And if we are in Him, then His peace belongs to us. Okay, we should have peace of mind. We should have peace in life. Okay, well, why is that? Okay, in the world, um, He says, you will have tribulation. Okay, I don't make that part of my confession. I, I change that and I say in the world there will be tribulation. Um, if tribulation comes my way, so be it. I will conquer it. But I'm not, going, I'm not going to make a confession declaring that I'm going to have tribulation. I will not confess that. If it comes, I will conquer it, but I'm not going to bring it forth by, by speaking it. Okay, so in the world there will be tribulation, but be of good cheer. Okay, have peace. Be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. Okay, so through Christ, we have put on, we have put on Christ. We are in Christ. We have put on Christ. We have put on the victory of Christ. We have put on the overcoming power of Christ. We have put on the overcoming authority of Christ. We have put on the victory of Christ. We have put on the ability to destroy the works of the devil. We have put on the ability to bring forth whatever provision is needed to meet the need of a situation. We have put on Christ and therefore If Christ overcame the world and we are in Christ and he is in us, then we will overcome the world. Therefore, we can have peace knowing that I am in Christ, Christ is in me, the spirit of Christ is upon me. Therefore, I overcome the world at all times, always. I overcome the world and I am of a good cheer. Amen. Okay, so what I do with all these scriptures and all these identity in Christ teachings is I make a confession out of them. And last time I showed you where on my website, you can go to a link and you can download the um, Identity in Christ Confession Scriptures. So there's like about 90 scriptures there. And every day, just about every day, ideally, we are confessing scriptures. And we're going through several of them on different topics every day. And then we're ingraining in ourselves our identity. We are coming to believe in the scriptures. We're opening up the scriptures and we're speaking forth the word of God over our lives and When you believe in your heart and speak out of your mouth, then you will receive those things because that is an operation in faith. Amen? Okay, so this is what I do. Okay, so I've already read the scripture, so I'm just going to go ahead and confess it in first person. I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus and I am baptized into Christ. I am the body of Christ. I am seated in heavenly places in a position of authority above all principalities, powers, mights, dominions, and every name that is named because I am the body of Christ and I am seated above all things. I believe in Jesus and I am in Christ and I have put on the authority of Christ. All authority in heaven and on earth belongs to me because I am part of Christ. I have put on the spirit of Christ. The Holy Spirit is upon me. The miraculous power of God is upon me because I have put on the spirit of Christ. 
I am in Christ. Christ is in me. The spirit of Christ is upon me. Therefore, the love of God exudes from me because I have put on Christ. I have put on the nature of Christ. I have put on the holiness of Christ. Just as Christ was holy, so shall I be holy. Just as Christ was doing good deeds, so shall I also do good deeds. Just as Christ was healing the sick and healing them all, I have put on his spirit. I have put on the spirit of Christ. Therefore, I heal the sick. I heal them all. I raise the dead. I raise them all. I cast out every unclean spirit because I have put on the authority and the spirit of Christ. I am in Christ. Therefore, I have peace of mind and I have peace in life. I have put on Christ and Christ is in me and in the world there's tribulation, but I am of a good cheer always because Christ has overcome the world and the spirit of Christ is in me. The spirit of Christ is upon me. Therefore, the victory of Christ belongs to me. I overcome the world at all times, always without fail. I destroy the works of the devil. I bring forth my father's goodwill. I have peace of mind. I have peace in life. I conquer all tribulation and I am constantly of a good cheer because victory belongs to me because I am in Christ and Christ has overcome the world. Okay, then I'll make it a thank you. Daddy, I thank you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for drawing me into Christ. Thank you for leading me into salvation. Thank you that I am born again. Thank you that you have put me in the body of Christ. Thank you, Daddy, that you have seated me in heavenly places in Christ above all principalities, powers, mights, dominions, and every name that is named. Thank you for putting me in a position of authority. Daddy, I thank you in the name of Jesus that you have anointed me with the Holy Spirit. Thank you that you have given me the authority of Christ. Thank you that you have given me the power, the miraculous power of Christ. Thank you that you have given me the power to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to cast out demons. Thank you that you have filled me and anointed me with your Holy Spirit. Therefore, the love of God fills me and exudes forth from me. Thank you that you have given me your nature, the Holy Spirit. And therefore, I do good deeds. I go about doing good and heal all who are oppressed by the devil for you are with me at all times. So daddy, I thank you and Jesus, I thank you and Holy Spirit, thank you. And thank you that I am in Christ. Therefore, I have peace of mind and thank you for peace in life. Thank you that I am of a good cheer always because Christ has overcome the world. You have put me in Christ and you have put Christ in me. Therefore, I always overcome all tribulation, whether tribulation is directed at me or whether tribulation is directed at someone else. I thank you that you have made me an overcoming son of God and I am in Christ. Christ is in me. Therefore, I destroy the tribulation in the name of Jesus by the authority of God given to me, by the uh, power of God you have given to me, by your spirit you have given to me, I always overcome. I always prevail. I'm always triumphant. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. That's what I do with scripture every day. Okay. And it's working for me. It will work for you. Whatever you believe in your heart and speak out of your mouth, it shall come true. That is a law. It's called the law of faith. All right. Now let's read point number three and see some more description about a believer in Jesus whose mind is renewed to their identity. You are more than a conqueror. You always prevail. You always get the victory. You always overcome all tribulation. You always overcome the distresses in life. You always overcome persecution. You always overcome Satan's works of hunger and poverty. You are always delivered from danger and violence. A person in faith always conquers the works of the devil because of the love of Christ and by way of him, Christ, giving you his authority, the Holy Spirit, the miraculous power of God, and the promise of help from God. So we need to change from failure-minded to victory-minded thinking. Amen? Okay, so this is a description of somebody whose mind is renewed in the area of victory in Christ. Okay, now let's look at some supporting scriptures. Romans 8, 35 to 37. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Okay, so he's telling us right now that the love of Christ is, is the key. Jesus loves us. Jesus loves us. Therefore, he gave himself for us. And through the giving of himself, he has equipped us for victory. 
You know, we have all authority in heaven and on earth. We have the Holy Spirit. We have the power of God. We have his goodwill. We have his promises. We have his love. Okay, so we are equipped for victory at all times always. Okay, and then he tells us that in all of these things, in all tribulation, we are more than conquerors. We conquer all distress. We conquer all persecution. We conquer all famine. We conquer all nakedness, peril, and sword. Okay, so we conquer everything. We conquer all these things through Jesus Christ who loves us. He did love us and therefore he gave himself for us and he still loves us and we abide in victory. We abide in conquering and destroying the works of the devil. All these works right here. We destroy these things um, by being in Christ, by knowing our identity, by operating in authority, by operating in the Holy Spirit and the power of God, by laying hold of the, the help and aid of God, which he has promised us. Amen. Okay, so in all these things, expect victory. Then in 1 Corinthians 15, 57 to 58. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Okay, so again, he says, God who gives us victory through Jesus Christ. Okay, so we need to expect victory. Victory is a gift from God to us. Victory belongs to us. Conquering belongs to us. Overcoming belongs to us. Peace belongs to us. Victory over all tribulation belongs to us. Victory over all these works of the devil belongs to us. Okay, we are sons of God. We are children of God, and God loves his children, and he has given us victory and we just need to renew our mind we need to expect victory we need to proclaim victory we need to make sure that our heart is believing for victory we need to make sure that our tongue is speaking victory and not speaking failure and even if you're not convinced yet that victory belongs to you at a minimum stop your lips from speaking forth failure okay just get control put a zipper on your mouth and put a yellow sticky on your hand, whatever you have to do, but remind yourself before you open your mouth and proclaim failure, just stop and think. Okay, do not be proclaiming failure, be proclaiming, I am more than a conqueror. I always overcome, I always have the victory. Okay, and then he tells us how your victory is gonna come. Your victory is gonna come if you are steadfast. And the implication here is being steadfast in faith and being immovable from faith. So we need to be steadfast in faith. That means you need to know that victory belongs to you and don't be convinced otherwise that you're going to fail. Okay, be believing victory is mine. I am a son of God. I am in Christ. Christ is in me. Victory belongs to me. And I don't care what the circumstances look like. I will not move away from my belief that victory belongs to me. No matter how bad the situation looks, victory is mine. Amen. That's the attitude and the heart condition that we need to have. That is being steadfast. Okay. That is being immovable. Being immovable from faith means that this promise of God of victory belongs to me. I don't care what the circumstances look like. I don't know how God's going to do it, but he will do it. I will not be moved from this promise. Victory is mine and I will not be moved. Okay. That is the heart condition and the attitude that we need to have that is being steadfast and that is being immovable. Do not be movable from faith. Do not be movable from the promises of God. Okay, the devil's going to try and get us to waver in our belief in the promises, but don't waver. When you start wavering, well, maybe, maybe I'm going to lose this one. Okay, well, you're you're exiting faith and you're gonna you're gonna get what you just thought. Okay, you have you can't be double minded. You have to be single minded, locked in on the promise. Okay, now one of the things that challenges us is at least in the United States, we're, we're driven by reasoning, we're driven by facts, we're driven by what we can prove, we like to have lots of evidence of things, and so we make fact-based decisions. In fact, you know, de depending what jobs you're in, you know, they always want to make fact-based decisions. That's the way the world works. Well, well, a lot of times the facts aren't in our favor, that's why we're trying to use faith to solve a problem. Okay, so we need to not be... We need to stop trying to figure out 
how God's going to do something. Like, for example, if there's a financial situation and you start adding up your paycheck, you start thinking about what time of year it is and it's not time for a bonus, it's not time for a tax return, there's no special thing happening this time of year that could, um, that could bring forth extra money. Once you start reasoning, then you're, you're going to start doubting because you're not going to be able to figure out how God's going to do it. And then guess what? Now you doubt. Okay, so we need to stop trying to figure out how God is going to answer. How is he going to give me the victory? Don't try and figure it out. That's his job. Okay, once you start figuring it out, then you're going to exit from faith. You're going to be moved. You're not going to be steadfast and victory will slip away from you. Okay, so don't try and reason things out how he will do it. And don't be looking at the facts. If the facts are contrary to the promise of God you're believing in, don't be staring at the facts. Be staring at the promise. Be proclaiming the promise. Okay? The facts will change. The promises of God are fixed. The promises of God are fixed. They don't change. The promises of God are fixed. If you will believe in the promise, if you will be steadfast and immovable from the promise of God you need for a particular situation, then, then the facts will change and you will receive the good thing. If you let the talk, if you let the facts talk to you, however, if the facts are disagreeable with the promise of God, if it does not look like you're going to get victory, if the facts are saying, you know, this isn't going to happen, the money's not going to come in, you're going to fail on this, you're going to lose the house, something bad's going to happen. If, if the facts are speaking in that direction and you're listening to them, then you're going to allow yourself to be moved out of faith and then failure will come. Okay, so, so quit looking at the facts so much and start looking at the promises. Just focus on the promises. Whenever that little doubt comes or the, the inclination to reason, then just reproclaim your faith. Just, just you know, Satan, shut up, for it is written. Um, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Daddy, I thank you that victory belongs to me. Thank you that I will be victorious in this situation. I don't know how you do it. I know the facts don't look good, but it doesn't matter what the facts look like. I thank you that victory belongs to me. Thank you that you have made me more than a conqueror. Thank you that I shall prevail. Thank you that you have made me an overcomer. And daddy, I thank you. It will be amazing how you pull this off. Thank you for victory. Okay, so what we've just done is we have cast down some doubt that the devil gave us, and then we have reproclaimed our faith. Okay, so that's what we are instructed to do in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Casting down every high thing and every argument that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Or you could say that that is contradictory to a promise of God. And then you take those thoughts captive by reproclaiming your faith, by reproclaiming whatever scripture you're believing in that trumps that doubtful thought that the devil had or your reasoning inclination brought up. All right. Okay, so we see here, we are promised victory in all kinds of just um, desperate looking situations. All right. Now, one of my favorite passages is Philippians 4.13. And this is a great verse to establish victory in something that you're worried about. And so what you want to do is you want to take whatever situation that you're concerned about, you want to put it inside the scripture, and then you want to confess it. All right, so this is a short and sweet verse. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Okay, now we've talked about this before. When a passage says all things or nothing, then it doesn't mean a lot when, it's, when we say it that way. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's not very impactful to me. It's too, it's too vague, too generic. Okay, but, when, but the way you make this verse work is you start putting your situation in there. So, for example, when um, I remember the first time I was going to preach in front of an audience, well, I didn't, you know, I didn't really like standing in front of people. I was nervous. I didn't like public speaking. I was shy. You know, all these things were warring against me preaching. And so what I did is I used this verse. And so I just did something like this. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Therefore, I preach and teach with boldness and authority. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. 
Therefore, I preach and teach with poise and confidence and well-spokenness. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Therefore, I will preach in a manner that produces great faith in the people. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Therefore, I preach and teach in a manner that produces faith, that produces works of Jesus, that produces love for God and love for man, love with action, and so be it in Jesus' name. For it is written, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Okay, so I would just take this scripture and I would put the situation that I was nervous about, I would put it in here and and then guess what? I was strengthened and then I was victorious in that situation. Okay, so that's my favorite way of using this passage. So whatever whatever is challenging me at the moment in time, I'm going to stick it in here. Okay, so it could be it could be anything like let's just say maybe maybe healing. Okay, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Therefore, I heal the sick. I heal them all through Christ who strengthens me. I cast out every unclean spirit through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Okay, and so I was doing this a lot uh, right before my trip to Africa this year. So I went to Africa to, to two cities in Ghana. I went to Accra, Ghana. I went to Takarati, Ghana, and I went to Bonawa, Ivory Coast. And this was from February 22nd till about March 8th. And so we had this two-week trip, and I've never seen so many healing miracles in my life. And we saw something like 80 to 100 instant healings um, across these three locations. It was just phenomenal. And what happened, all the things I was proclaiming, they, were, they came true. I was preaching and teaching with boldness and authority. And it came true. I was preaching with poise and confidence, and it came true. I declared that great faith would arise in the people. It came true. I declared that that um, the people would do the works of Jesus. It came true. So everything that I was declaring ahead of time using the scripture came true. Okay, we had phenomenal healing results, and because the people heard the word that was being taught, and then they saw phenomenal display of the power of God. Um, after receiving the teaching, because the people were watching, you know, we had healing lines and there's just like one person after another, after another, after another was being healed. It was the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life. And the people saw that and the teaching was going to mostly to pastors and the pastors saw this. And so then they believed all that we talked about, you know, authority, the goodwill of God, healing, protection, provision, all these things. They, they believed in the entirety of the message because they saw it being proven out in the area of healing. Okay. And, and I credit a lot of that is just preparation ahead of time by making declarations of faith using this scripture, proclaiming good things. And they all came true because it's the will of God for all these good things to happen, right? So the things I'm putting in this scripture to come true, they're in agreement with the good will of God. Amen? All right, so what I request that you do is whatever situation you're dealing with in life, maybe you're dealing with a challenge in a relationship or a struggle at work or, or maybe there's something you're fearful about, just find a way to stick it in this verse and confess it. And then just watch what happens. You will be strengthened in the situation. You will be led in victory. Amen. So I'll tell you what, I am short on time today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this teaching early. And it'll be about a 30-minute teaching, so that'll be good. And we'll pick up in the next video, and we'll talk about some other aspects of victory. We need to resist the devil. We need to resist his temptations, and we need to operate in authority to defeat him when he attacks. So these are going to be key to walking in victory. Then we're going to talk about reigning in life as a king through Jesus Christ. And we'll talk about being seated in a position of authority above all things, including you know any work of the devil that you can imagine. And so that's going to engage the imagination and help us be envisioning things that we need to come against with authority. Amen. All right, so we'll talk again soon, probably this weekend. So God bless you and talk to you later.